Hey everybody, what's going on? Dr. Chad Wolner here. And Dr. Buddy Allen. And this is episode 44 of the Health Fundamentals Podcast. And on today's episode, we have our good friend and special guest, Natalie Hodson, here with us. And we're going to be talking about abs, core, and pelvic floor. So let's get started. You're listening to the Health Fundamentals Podcast. I'm Dr. Chad Wolner. And I'm Dr. Buddy Allen. And this show is about giving you the simple but powerful cutting edge tools you need to change your health and your life. So sit back and enjoy the show as we show you the path to your best life down to a science. So hey everybody, hope you guys are having an incredible day. We are so excited today to have our good friend here with us, Natalie Hodson. She has an amazing story. We were just talking uh, just before the episode started and uh, I've known, we've kind of had this interesting kind of uh, online relationship, Natalie and I, I've known her uh, online for quite some time. She's known about me through kind of the ClickFunnels, uh, Russell Brunson world. Um, And this was actually our first time meeting in person. And uh, so it's been great kind of catching up with her and kind of learning a little bit more about her story. Um, She has done some pretty amazing things in terms of helping women. She just told us, was it 200,000 women have gone through this program of yours, the abs, core and pelvic floor program? Yeah three years yeah that's amazing like you can't fit that many people in like the largest stadiums like (laughs) that's incredible so something that I've really been blessed and it's crazy how it all happened a lot of it kind of happened by accident um and I figured out that a lot of women have this problem where saying it pretty bluntly we accidentally pee our pants you know a lot of times after babies if you laugh cough sneeze jump on a trampoline um, I think, you know, I'm in a room here with two men, but yeah. <laughs> a room full of women and every woman there will kind of laugh, you know, and be like, oh yeah, my mom growing up always would say she was going to pee her pants. And now it happens to me. And for the longest time, I just thought, I really just thought that was just a part of motherhood. I just thought, yeah, that's how it works. After kind of an inevitable face. fact of life that that's, you're going to go through the pee your pants phase yeah. yet again. Exactly. You know what- and I didn't know that it could actually be improved with just some simple exercises, but they're things that kind of seem counterintuitive. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm trying to fix this issue. I need to do more workouts. And the truth is it's actually a simpler set of exercises that you have to do, but it can it can completely improve the issue. I mean, I, I used to pee my pants every time. I'd wear, <laughs> I'd wear pants. I mean, it was bad. And now that issue is completely gone. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, at CrossFit every morning, whenever if ever we have box jumps, jump ropes, yeah. anything like that, before the workout starts, it's like everyone goes to go pee. Yep. <laughs> it's just fact, like everybody. That's I was in a CrossFit phase for a while, and we instead of double unders, the girls would call it double undies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned something there that I want to kind of go back on, and that's this idea that uh, what are some of the misconceptions that that women have about fixing this? Because you mentioned like they're they're trying to do certain things. What are some of the common things that they try to do that just don't work? Yeah. So first, maybe like let's take a step back and kind of even explain. Yeah, what yeah, it yeah. Is. So the word is a funny, fancy word. It's called pelvic floor dysfunction. That's a doctor term, a, a scientific term, just saying you know, you have accidental leakage and men and women all have this thing called a pelvic floor. So it's this bowl shaped area that's made up of tendons and muscles and ligaments and nerves and your bowels sit on top of this pelvic floor, your uh, reproductive for women, like our, u- our uterus and um, when your bladder. And so what oftentimes can happen is, especially women who have had babies, I had two 10 pound babies. So if you think about it, that's a lot of weight and pressure sitting on your pelvic floor. Well, we grew up learning, if you wanna have stronger biceps, you do bicep curls. If you wanna have a bigger booty, you do squats. But nobody ever talked about pelvic floor strengthening. It's not the most glamorous area of the body, typically. We're talking about a very uh, kind of sensitive area there uh, in terms of, you know, it's it's not an area people like to show off. Can I, can I get a little like nitty gritty? Here? Oh, please so, do. I think a lot of times there's some misconceptions. So one of the reasons I found that people get embarrassed talking about this is because a lot of women think that it's a vaginal issue or like a looseness or a tightness issue. That's, that's completely unrelated. Your pelvic floor is, is this area of muscles that can be strengthened. But if you don't actively work those muscles, you're never going to, you know, get tighter. So if you think about it, if you're If your bladder is sitting on top of your pelvic floor and you're doing any kind of high impact exercise like jumping or even if you 
you know, you yeah. sneeze, that's yeah. putting pressure down. Sure. And so that can cause, if those, if that pelvic floor is not strengthened, that can cause leakage. That can cause, um, there's, you know, there's, um, there's different, there's different levels of severity of things that can happen. So sure. what happens is if you do these exercises to really strengthen that pelvic floor, then that's stronger. So if you're having those impact activities, which a lot of people think what's high impact, even running, right? Sure. You're stepping and you're pounding every step. Sure. And so what we do, um, and, and so this program, what's interesting is it actually fixes two things or improves two things. So, um, there's another word, and it's a weird word, and for the first six months, I could never pronounce it right. It's called diastasis recti. So oftentimes what also happens is after a woman have babies, in 100% of pregnancy, your, your ab muscles get separated, which makes sense, right? You have a baby inside, right. your, inside your belly. And um, in about two-thirds of women, after they have the baby, their ab muscles are still separated. And so a lot of women come to me and they're like, Natalie, I, I'm eating right, I'm exercising, but I still look kind of pregnant, and I have this separation. And the technical turn is your linea alba connects those muscles. Sure. And so I had that after I had my daughter, I had, I had a four finger, I could fit four fingers in between my ab muscles here. And what's interesting is these same exercises improve both. Now people get confused because they're like, what the heck do my abs have to do with my bladder? But if you think about it, your core, a lot of people think your core is just your six pack muscles. Right. right? And you guys know this, your core actually is made up of the muscles of your abdomen, but it's also the muscles around your spine. It's your pelvic floor, it's your diaphragm. And so we all have this, it's an internal pressure, um, and either that pressure's going out, causing those muscles to separate, or the pressure's going down, causing you to pee your pants. And so a lot of times people think, oh, my, my stomach doesn't look the way I want. My abs don't look the way I want. I'm just going to do more sit-ups and more crunches and more V-ups and more planks. And actually, those exercises make it worse, which is is, is um, confusing to people. Because right? they're creating they're like, more huh. pressure outward or downward but like you're exactly talking about. What's happening. If you think you're in a plank position, think about that. That's a lot of pressure on that very tender uh, connective tissue called your linea alba. And so what we have people do, and they don't like it at first because they're like, wait a second. For four weeks, I can't do my normal stuff. I can't run. I said, look, this isn't a lifelong sentence, okay? <laughs> it's four weeks where we're going to improve and repair this so that way you can go back to your normal function. Right. And what people find is that their posture improves, their back pain goes away, and they don't pee their pants. So they can do more things, you know, with their kids. And um, and so we have them do a series of kind of weird exercises. Um, we have them do more simple things where they're focusing on – we teach them how do you even – how do you even flex those pelvic sure. floor muscles? Right. Um, one of my favorite uh, ways to describe it, and men and women can do these too, by the way. In fact, my dad had prostate cancer. And afterwards, he looked through my program. He said, these are the same exercises that they gave to me. I said, I know. You just don't have, you know, you don't have the uterus. You don't have the, the vaginal contraction. But everything else in there, you guys have the same parts. And so yeah. um, we teach you to kind of squeeze um the muscles surrounding your pelvic floor. So it's kind of like if you were, again, kind of TMI stuff. But no, no, no. So <laughs> if you were, um, like, imagine you're going to the bathroom and you had to stop the flow of urine, you contract those muscles. Um, one of my best ways to explain how to lift up your pelvic floor is imagine you have, like, a milkshake straw down, your, down the center of your body and you're sucking that up and you're trying to lift that muscle back up. Um, and so it's a series of contractions and holds that we have people do along with some other simpler exercises. And in majority of women, they can eliminate surgery. They can, and I'm not saying, you know, sur I'm not saying we're not anti-surgery, right? Right. But there's a lot of women, myself included, when my babies were little, I wouldn't have made an appointment to go see a pelvic floor specialist sure. and brought my babies along. I right. Mean, we're, that's a wonderful option. But what we wanted to do was give people an option of something they could do at home and then if they wanted to take it the next step, then that's when they could go see a pelvic floor specialist. That's awesome. You know, the, the thing that you said that I really caught hold of that I thought was really so profound and so true is that sometimes in life what, what happens is in an effort to try and fix things on our own, sometimes we we feel the answer is simply by doubling down or tripling down on the same things. I'm I'm not working hard enough, and so therefore I've just got to, you know, up the ante. And the reality of it is, I love that that approach that you're talking about because what we're really saying is kind of somewhat counterintuitive. You know, we've got to kind of time out, pause, really reevaluate what's really going on here. And I think for a lot of women who are listening, that's probably 
um, welcome news, you know, kind of a breath of fresh air for them and relieving like, okay, whew, you know, I don't have to kind of, you know, quadruple my ab exercises or whatnot, but really like approach it from a different angle. Okay. Uh, and, and that'll make all the difference in the world. And, and the other thing you said that I thought was really interesting, kind of from a chiropractic standpoint that we see, you know, people when it comes to muscle strength, they think of it in terms of one version. And that is the clinical term that they use uh, when you're building muscle sizes, hypertrophy, right. muscle hypertrophy. We're not talking about bodybuilding your pelvic floor here, right. you know, building the size of it. What we're really talking about is another component of strength, and that is that neuromuscular connection, meaning your brain is ultimately what controls those contractions, right? Your brain sends signals via the spinal cord, via spinal nerves that control that area. And what we see happens a lot of times through injuries and or disuse or misuse or a variety of different things. In this case, you know, pregnancy, which can certainly create a variety of different uh, new challenges, we'll say, sure. it can interfere with that signal. And what you're basically saying, if I'm understanding correctly here, because you're the expert here, mm -hmm. is that what we're trying to do is reestablish that connection. We're not necessarily trying to build the size of the muscles per se, but the efficiency and the quality of the signals that are happening between the brain and the and those areas, exactly. correct? And making a mind-muscle connection and even understanding what does that feel like to contract those muscles. And then what we tell people is, you know, afterwards maintenance is always a great thing. One of the one of the number one questions we get asked is, well, I had my babies 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Is it too late? And it's not. It's, you know, the same analogy I use is um, it's kind of like if you've never ever, again, used biceps, done a bicep curl, and you're 50 years old and you start lifting weights, you're going to get stronger biceps. You bet. Yeah. And so what we tell people is from a maintenance perspective, go through the program and then afterwards, you know, every morning when you're brushing your teeth, just do a couple pelvic floor squeezes, a couple pelvic floor contractions. Just keep those muscles um, you know, in check. And it doesn't have to be a forever, you know, you can go back to your normal activities. If you're a runner, eventually you can go back to your normal training routine or CrossFit or whatever that looks like. Um, but it doesn't have to be this life sentence of I'm going to pee my pants my whole life. I'm going to look pregnant forever. You know, it can actually be improved. So. I think that's one of the miraculous things that we take for granted about the body is that it intuitively, instinctively knows what to do. Yeah. Even after, like you said, 10, 20, 30 years of of having these problems, abuse, neglect, whatever you want to call it, whatever the reason, whatever the issue, the body intuitively knows exactly what to do when we do the right things, you know, and that's one of our fundamentals of health that we talk about, you know, is that health comes from the insider. Um, barring a few rare exceptions, you know, the body is self-healing, is self-regulating, and it knows exactly what to do in these situations so long as we give it the right input or the right uh, fueling or whatever it might be. So that's exactly what we're talking well, about. And one of the things I get frustrated with is, you know, I think, um, especially in that my hope and my goal with this program was to just help get good information out to people because especially in that very, you know, it's a vulnerable phase, right? Sure. After you have a baby and your whole life gets turned upside down. And unfortunately there's some marketers out there who have preyed on that in my opinion, and they'll sell all kinds of, you know, ab workouts and, and, and wraps and creams. And, you know, I'm not anti a hundred percent of those things, but what I don't like is for people to recognize, wow, these women are in a vulnerable state. We're going to take advantage of that and sell whatever we can. My hope was that we can get good information out there. Let women know that they're not alone. They don't have to be ashamed or embarrassed because, you know, they're peeing their pants or they have this ab separation and they can't figure out why. Let's give some solutions and then give people encouragement along the way. And, you know, one of the things, even if, even if you're listening to this, you've never had a baby or you're a guy listening to this. I think a lot of times, um, a lot of the people that I work with and I coach and you guys, I'm sure see this too, um, get stuck in the, I call it the three P's. So perfectionism, procrastination, paralyzation, right? So yeah. I always joke, I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of us are like, well, I want to have this perfect meal plan and this perfect diet and this perfect, perfect workout program. And I'm gung ho for a week or two. And then ugh, life happens. So if I can't be perfect, I'm going to procrastinate for a minute because I think I can do it, but I, I, I want to be perfect. And then, uh, you get paralyzed by perfection. And yeah. One of the tips, one of the things I always love to tell people is um, one of my favorite things, and you can apply this to anything, not just health. You can apply this to your finances, to anything, your business, uh, your relationships is a, is a good, better, best mentality. So what I try to do is focus on, okay, our goal is obviously to be always do good. And I'm not saying don't, don't have big goals, don't shoot for your dreams, but there are going to be times in your life where 
life's just going to happen. So what I tell people to do is, okay, say, for example, it's kind of going outside the scope of abs. Court, no, but, no, no. You know, say, um, say your girlfriends call you up and they say, hey, do you guys want to meet for dinner tonight? And you're like, yeah, well, you have this meal plan planned out. So, you know, good or best could be like, all right, well, I'm supposed to stick to my meal plan so I can either go on the website, figure out the macros of everything, eat perfectly to a tea, or even pack my food. Is that realistic? You're gonna be that nope. weird. You're gonna be the weirdo that shows up and be like, <laughs> oh yeah, our friend Natalie over there, she's on the diet, you know. And right. That's not gonna work long term. So what I tell people is say, okay, you go into that situation, let's focus on better. But the trick is you're gonna make that decision before you get to the restaurant. And the reason you do that is because then you can start to train your brain that, okay, Natalie, you're going to tell yourself you're going to do something and then you're actually going to do it. Follow through. And so better might be, all right, um, maybe I want a glass of wine and I, uh, so I'm going to have wine and not rolls. I'm not going to even ask the server to bring the rolls to my table because I know when those rolls are smelling good in my face with the honey butter, I can't say no, right? Or maybe you decide you want both and so then you say, okay, I'm just going to do good and I'm going to pass on dessert. I'm going to pick one carb or the other. And you make that decision before you get to the restaurant. And so you can start to train your brain instead of constantly saying you're going to do something and then failing. What happens is a lot of times people get stuck hung up in this idea of I failed. So I'm a failure. Right. right. And it's different. One's an act. You failed at something. One's your identity. And what I try to help people understand is that if you can make that decision beforehand, um, even if it's different than like your perfect plan, you can still have a win for the day, right? right. And so you're starting to train your brain, whoa, I can say I'm going to do something and then actually do that. And I'm, for me, I'm always looking for ways to get small wins in my day because that gives me momentum to want to keep going instead of saying like, screw it, I, I messed up, I'm just going to start again on Monday, you know? Sure, that's, right. That's what gives you that, that win for the day. So instead of, you know, what I tell people a lot is what I see a lot is people are trying to go 20 feet with a 10 foot leash attached to them, you know? And so what ends up happening is you're always keep falling and getting stuck. And I, and I say, okay, well, how can we go 10 feet with a 10 foot leash? Or even how can we do better, which would be five foot with a 10 foot leash or even two feet with a 10 foot leash, but that's better than staying exactly where you're at or even going backwards. Right. And so long-term, you know, we were just talking about this before I see people do like these crazy diets or hop on every new fad diet and my thing is, you know, consistently, if you're trying to get 10 feet ahead every time, let's go two feet at a time or let's go five feet at a time. And I know it doesn't sound as sexy. People are like, no, I want to make fast changes as soon as right. I can. But long term, you're going to have a lot better results if you put in realistic expectations for yourself and you continually, continuously prove to yourself like, all right, I can say I'm going to do something and I can actually do it. And eventually over time, that is, this creates a snowball effect where you're getting wins all the time. You're going to want to keep doing that. You know? That's huge. No, absolutely. So very inspiring, truly very inspiring uh, words of wisdom there for people that they can really take and apply, whether it be what we're talking about here, pelvic floor or other areas of our life, because uh, at, at the end of the day, really what we're talking about here really isn't pelvic floor stuff. We're talking about, you know, your overall health and well-being is really what we're talking about. But for those who are listening, who are now intrigued, who are like, okay, who's this Natalie Hudson? If they haven't heard of you, if they're not one of your 200,000 <laughs> women uh, and they want to follow you and, and kind of find out more, what are some ways that people can get in touch with you or kind of start to learn more about what you're yeah, doing? So I have a website. It's just Natalie Hodson. It's H-O-D-S-O-N.com. Um, Facebook and Instagram. We've got between Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, about 2 million followers over there. And wow. um, <laughs> and I live here locally too. So I'm in Meridian awesome. and I've got two kids and, um, you know, they're, I'm just a normal person. I think sometimes we look at people online and we think, oh, I could never be like them. And the truth is we're all just regular people trying to figure this out. You sure. Know? And, um, so that's, that's where I connect with people. I've got little kids. So I share a lot of the behind the scenes of what is that like? How do you get your kids to eat healthy? How do you keep them active? You know? And, um, and, so and I've seen fishing pictures. She's got some amazing <laughs> catches there. Yeah. We are both, we uh, love we love fishing. Really? Yeah. Oh so, man, I'll have to show you guys those pictures. I'll yeah. Fact, if we, yeah. That'd be fun. So I actually hold, um, I, well, They've since been rebroken, but for a period you of held time, a record. I held two Idaho State fishing records for Nicely sturgeon. Done. Ten, oh, man. Ten foot sturgeon and um, salmon. Oh, that's amazing. So I always joke I'm a secret prepper. Oh, like okay. <laughs> prepper, but I'm like not really joking. So in my backyard, I built a huge raised bed garden and I have that's 13 awesome. fruit trees and 
Um, I just love, for me, you know, and I don't, I know not everybody's this way, but I just, there's something I love about planting a seed, nurturing it, watching it grow, knowing where your food comes from, just having that skill set. Like if something sure. crazy were to happen, I know how to grow my own food. I know how to provide for my we, kids. We've got a part two coming up here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're going to talk this about it. Yeah, no, this is really, really good. So, you know, I thought I might mention, um, a lot of times people come and they say, Natalie, how do you get your kids on board? You know, cause a lot of times kids are real picky eaters or sure. they don't want to exercise. And, um, one of the tips I give, if, because I know we have a lot of people listening who have families and are parents. And, um, I think one of the things I, I talk a lot about is that habits are caught, not taught. Yep. And so your kids are going to model what you see. And so I think sometimes I see people make the mistake and I've made it before too. I'm definitely not, a, I don't have all the answers. I'm not a perfect person. Um, but I think a lot of times we try to shove our beliefs down on our kids and we think, well, if we tell them what to do, then they'll just do it. And I think a lot of times just modeling, simply modeling helps. So in our house, we have a two bite rule. So, you know, I might make something for dinner and they hate it. Well, we have to at least do two bites, you know, get them awesome. used to it. Um, we'll have little tricks like I'll make smoothies for my kids. Well, here's a like ninja hack. You can throw spinach in your smoothies and it's green. The kids won't touch it. You throw a couple blueberries in there and it turns purple. They have no clue there's spinach in that smoothie, yeah. you know? Um, my, we have, I'm, we're, I'm lucky we have a home gym, but um, I started, so my son, this is kind of a funny story. So he's really into these things called Beyblades right now. Oh yeah. Those are. Oh so yeah. My son went through like that phase. Rip them back. Yep. Well, so I knew he was really into Beyblades and I was having a hard time getting him to want to be active. He wanted to just play Beyblades all the time. So I said, Hey, Lincoln, I said, I bet you we could write a training program that will help you be better at Beyblades. <laughs> and so we wrote a training program and included in it was like a strengthening exercise for your forearms. <laughs> and I told him, I said, if you do this training program and he's, it's so fun. He's, he, we set us, we set our alarms and we wake up every morning and we go out and we work out in the gym in the morning. And, um, I mean, he, you know, he lifts really lightweight, so I'm not putting heavy weights on him, but he's my workout buddy, you know, in the morning. That's awesome. And I think cause you make it fun instead of being, Hey, we have to have 30 second rest right now. You know, it's like, all right, let's, um, let's be bunnies and let's hop to the end of the cul-de-sac for a minute. Or, Hey, let's have a little race and see if we can outrun the chickens or whatever it is, you know? And if you make it, if you make it fun and you're sure. not crazy strict, I think a lot of times, you know, like I was talking about earlier, we get caught up in this. I mean, how many times have you guys, you know, I've definitely gone through phases like this where I've said, I'm going to have no sugar ever, ever again. And then all of a sudden, guess what happens? A time of the month shows up and I turn into a crazy woman looking cr through my pantry for anything <laughs> with sugar, right? Yeah. And um, I think with our kids, it's kind of similar. If you're that parent that like never lets your kids have treats, they're pro guess what's going to happen? They're probably going to go to their friend's house. Yeah. And they're going to gorge in the pantry. And so in our home, we've kind of implemented this rule that there's no good foods and there's no bad foods. It's just there's some things that you eat more of and there's some things that you eat less of. And for me, once I really got that, it really helped me from that binge cycle of like being super, super strict and getting good results and then going way off the rails, you know? Right. And I think, you know, those, those, that, that mindset is really important to teach our kids so they don't have to grow up with the same disordered eating patterns sure. that maybe some of us did, you know? No doubt. No doubt. Well, these are amazing tips awesome. and super helpful. And I can already tell you're a much nicer parent than I am because in the, in the Wolner home, we have one saying when it comes to eating and it's this, you don't have to like it. You just have to eat it. <laughs> so, I love that. Anyways, um, I hope that this has been valuable for you guys. If you know others that could benefit from what uh, Natalie has shared, it's been so amazing. Thank you so much. We know that you're busy and we know you have a lot going on. So thanks for taking time out of your schedule to be here with us, but you've shared some incredible insights uh, regarding a lot lot of things that I think can help a lot of people. So thank you so much. And, and thank you guys uh, for listening. Share this with others that you know could benefit from it. And uh, we'll talk to you guys on the next episode. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Health Fundamentals podcast. Be sure to subscribe so that you stay in the loop and in the know with all of the cutting edge health information that we share. If you know other people that could benefit from this information, please share it with them as well. Also, be sure to give us a review. These really help us to ultimately help more people. Last but not least, if you have questions that you want answered live on the show, or if you have ideas for topics that you would like us to cover, please shoot us an email and let us know at info at thehealthfundamentals.com.